Can I swap the Henderson walking beam suspension on my Peterbilt to a low leaf? Let's find out. 2019, 348, Peterbilt, steel truck. Customer states it rides too rough. We're gonna go from that to that. Welcome to a new episode of Bending with Bending, where our imagination can take us anywhere. So before you decide to do this, let's look at some of the things that you're gonna have to do. Hey, and if you like the channel so far, and the red pointy finger, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, smash it, smash it. One of the things you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to remove the spider. Because normally on the rear housing, this is over here, and vice versa. So all you gotta do is take this side off and swap it, flip it over, and put it on this side. Your brake uh, chambers can be on the inside, so that way your spring can come over the top of the axle and come down. Another thing you're going to have to do is you're going to have to remove this lateral torque arm. It's going to have to be cut from the housing, completely ground down, and buffed out. Okay? Because we no longer need that. This other torque arm has to be removed too because in order for it to bolt up properly and have room for our shock mount on this side, we have to cut it loose and remove it from the housing and install a new mounting bracket. As you can see on our outside, this is where our uh, holes for our shock mount are going to be on the inside. And as you can see here, this is our torque arm mounting bracket and it needs to be moved from here to here directly over the axle you do have to cut loose and remove the lower mounting brackets for the walking beams now as your spring comes down here and goes over the top of the axle and comes down and turns you have to have room here for the bag inside here and you have to make sure that your brake chamber doesn't hit the bottom of the spring now if you have the old section of frame that the uh, original um, system came off of which I suggest getting the frame rail ends you can cut the sides and use that as your hole pad. Make sure you mark your components accordingly from the side of the frame that you took them off of so that way there's no issue. Now obviously when you swap the spiders and all this stuff around, uh, you're going to have to remove the housing or the uh, hub here. So you're going to need, um, you know, um, seals and whatnot. Now when you start this process, you need to go from center to center on both of these and make sure that your center to center on the original Hendrickson is going to match up with the center to center on ends, on your air leaves. Now, once this is all done, we can adjust this somewhat, but we're going to be able to adjust uh, our uh, tracking and stuff like that now. But we are going to have to check all these driveline angles once all this is put in and everything and we set our ride height. Now, we will have to add a leveling valve, hoses, and a switch inside the cap. But now as you can see, we've got most of this stuff already changed out on a lot of this. Actually went where the old bracket was at. So, that is a plus. This is an extremely invasive job, okay? So, if you're planning on doing this, uh, make sure that you have all your parts readily available and make sure everything is available for doing this because it is a process. There are certain guidelines that you have to follow if you want to cut or weld on a frame. So, do not cut or weld on the frame. Drill all your holes, please. All right, now let's show you what we can use the torch on and hit you with the high-speed montage. Here we go. Okay, one of the things you want to do is you want to keep your torch temperature down. I say damp temperature down. It's still a torch, right? But what you want to do is you want to cut above the weld. You don't want to cut at the weld or below the weld right at the housing because you could potentially gouge the housing or overheat the metal itself causing a lot of distortion in the housing. So then you can come back and do a final cleaning and grind most of that out to keep the temperature down. All right, now that we got all this cleaned up and the new bracket on here, we got it tacked on. The distance from here to the frame needs to be three and a half inches minimum, okay? So that way it doesn't hit when it goes up and down, right? One of the easiest ways to do this is to go ahead and uh, get on this side, bolt it up and bolt it in and then uh, set your height, ride height for the rear end, and then tack weld this on, then take it off and, you know, clean, you know, make a mark, take the torque arm out and then clean it up and weld it. We are gonna use our little torch to preheat. Another thing you wanna watch out for is where your shock mount is right here, for your interior shock mount, in the edge of this to make sure when it goes up and down, it clears that shock mount. Standard 
width of a normal truck is 52 inches, so you gotta move this one back two inches. Make so whenever you put this spring in, you will notice that the housing is going to tilt forward quite a bit. Now this is gonna change your angle. So once you're on the ground, you have to check all your driveline angles. All right, now that we got most of this done, you can tell you have to center this axle. You're gonna go from the drum on each side to the frame and center the axle. Then you're going to center your springs and you're going to sight them and make sure that they are straight. This should be approximately three and a quarter inches from the spider to the edge of the spring. You wanna make sure your bag is straight up and down. If you have to adjust it in or out, you can. Now, also, your shock, you have to make sure that you raise this up and down and make sure your shock does not impede with your bag or the torque arm underneath. Almost forgot, we gotta put our stops on. All right, so on our torque arm, as you can see, we got her in, got her all drilled up and everything. Everything's all welded on. Need a little paint on there, I'm gonna paint it. But uh, you're gonna take out both these torque arms going across the center here, because we don't need them no more. Straight bag. Straight spring. Now underneath here, we have our leveling valve and our rod. Make sure your rod is attached and it is running perpendicular to the shock. We use the original mounting bracket also and uh, hooked it all up and we set our ride height. All right, before we put the tires on, we're gonna show you, here it is. It's all ready to go. Everything's all cleaned up. But now nothing left to do but put the tires on and track it. Now that we got her all leveled out, we're gonna ready to get her out the door. Drive line angles are running between one and two degrees. So we're all good there. Thanks for watching. Smash the subscribe button. We'll see you on the next video. Bye.